Welcome to the Freelance Thrive. Here we talk with skilled freelancers about their professional journey. Stay tuned for real life experiences to learn and actionable steps to take to improve your freelancing career. My name is Yuri. I'm a community builder at Code Control and 9 am.works. And my guest is Daisy Hilbrands, a location independent certified transformative coach who's been a scientist for 20 years and decided to use the skills that made her a great scientist for becoming a great coach. So welcome, Daisy. Thank you very much. And thank you for having me here. I'm super curious. And um, we are here today to talk about clients, constellations and all the stuff. But before that, please tell me, what are those skills that you took from being a scientist into coaching and why? Uh, yeah, one of them is the curiosity of learning more always want to know more, understand more. Um, and that I use when I'm trying different type of methods in coaching. Uh, I also chose a coaching direction that is science-based uh, transformative coaching. So it is based on uh, con con cognitive behavior science, most of it. Um, and it's also, uh, what do you say? In science, you, you don't have the answers. And as a coach, you also don't have the answers. Uh, it's up for your client to find their answers. So the mindset, in fact, is much more similar uh, than I thought when I changed my career. And talking about the answers, um, mm. I have this notion inside that nobody can give you answers so that you can find your answer yourself. But still, people are searching for answers everywhere. So. How to change this mindset from like searching for answers outside to mm -hmm. searching for answers inside? Yes, I will say it's uh, it's to find the questions who makes you reflect. And that's one of the things a coach does. It is asking you question who makes you reflect instead of giving you solutions. Um, so depending on who you are, because this is also personal, uh, it can be journaling, it can be drawing, it can be doodling, it can be ping pong with friends. Mm. So find the method who works for you to find your answers. Um, and it is really independent of each person of what works for you. And it can also be quite different what works if for you if you are, what you see, challenged by a personal uh issue than if you're challenged with a work issue so also just embrace that what works one place perhaps does not work another place and as a coach what is one question that you answer your clients to find what is the best way to find answer for themselves because you're talking about many different things like journaling doodling playing ping pong like mm. how to find this one uh thing that make you you know open yes uh there we come a little bit back to the to the science trial and error <laughs> got it got it. Try, it try try out be open-minded try different uh, things see which one sparks for you i wanted to find a magical answer but no <laughs> no try <sorry>. and error <laughs> yeah got it so let's talk a little bit about the client so let's imagine that a client cancels on you at the last minute or just doesn't show up for a meeting mm -hmm. And then just starts ghosting for some reason. Nobody knows yeah. why. No answers, no emails, for calls, whatever. So what are the feelings that freelancers deal with at this moment? Yeah, I, I will say again, it is personal. But what I generally do here, that is both uh, this uh, disappointment of, hey, I'm sitting here. I'm ready. Uh, what now? What do I do now? And it's also this feeling of being rejected. Uh, and even though there can be very good reasons, uh, if we are not talking about go ghosting, but just a normal uh, not showing up, the first thought that comes to most people is, oh, did I so do something wrong? So this feeling of, hey, it must be my fault that I'm getting rejected. How to overcome these feelings? Yeah, uh, it is to find out again what works for you uh, in this situation, because as a freelancer, you will experience this. I have not talked to any freelancer who have not experienced this. So it is to find your strategy of what works for you. Um, I can share what, what I have chosen to do as my strategy and why it works for me. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have a two sided strategy in it. Um, I wait, what do you say, if I have a call with someone, and I often have Zoom calls, so it's mostly video calls, 
my limit is I wait 10 minutes. I don't wait any longer than that. And then I log out. Mm -hmm. And then I have chose to see that I have been gifted some free times. Yeah. I had, I had something planned here now. Suddenly the time is all mine. I can do whatever I like. And I do quite often chose to do something pleasurable instead of just going into work mode again. So instead of just going into work mode, I have this feeling of they didn't come. This was disappointing. And why? Then I'm choosing to say, hey, I can take a break. I can sit and cuddle the cat. I can read my book. I can take a small walk. I have the time to do that now. So that's the first uh, strategy of ch uh, changing the free times you suddenly got into something positive. You know, it's interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah, please, please go on. Yeah. The other strategy I have, I don't email people right away. I email them by the end of the workday. And this is, again, I am in that moment, to a certain degree, disappointed. And that will affect my communication. So I don't want to to have that part in the communication I have, have with the potential client. And also, I also found out from me, sometimes when you email people, they're like, oh, I forgot, I will log on right away. But I am in a in a funny place mood wise. So I, I'm perhaps not my best. So I would rather that we do a rescheduling. And that's why I chose to say, hey, by the end of the workday, I'm going to email and say, hey, you didn't show up. Why? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what's, what happens next? So are you waiting for clients response or what, what, what to do, for example, if clients is not responding to that email? Yes. Uh, what do you say? Like I said, I email by the end of the day and, and that is uh, pretty much uh, quite forward. You didn't show up. Why? So also asking why, there can be a perfectly good reason for it. It can also just be that they forgot that happens from time to time. I do also rarely, but I do also forget things from time to time and don't show up. So giving the opportunity of just saying, hey, something came in the way I forgot. Um, so that's the first step. And that one I just leave. Uh, and if I haven't heard from them within two days, I also, I send an email again, uh, again, requesting, hey, we have this appointment, uh, have something come in the way, would you like to rescheduling? Um, if I'm still not hearing from them, I am letting go. I say that was not meant to happen. And that can be very hard. And also, this is my personal preference. Perhaps something else works better for you. You perhaps need to send a couple of more emails before it feels good for you to let go. Yeah. But you do need at some point to let go. And I do recommend that you find out when before you start having uh, too many clients. So really, the first time it happens, sit with your emotion, find out how do I handle this? What are my way of handling this? And how long do I chase a client? It's so interesting. You were saying, you were talking about uh, having fun and like going cuddling the cat or reading a book. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I was thinking about my emotions at this moment. And the moment that I have a call, I, I love talking to people. I love to have conversations. But the moment somebody canceled their call, I was like, oh, wow, thank you so much. I don't know why, but I'm so happy at this moment. Like, yeah, I have like 30 minutes of a, yeah. an unexpected time to maybe I go have fun or maybe finish something that I didn't have enough time to finish. And uh, But what, for example, if a client like emails you like, okay, so you are waiting for 10 minutes. If clients emailing you like 15 minutes later and like, oh my God, I was caught up in a traffic jam or I have just finished my uh, meeting, another meeting. So would, are you open to go to the call, uh, to continue going to the call? So are you doing that or are you like still rescheduling? I'm rarely doing that. Uh, and, and it's also, it's uh, out of uh, also respect of my day because I will have other calls planned and squeezing something in later than it was planned means that it has to cut, cut shorter. Or I feel stressed about the next things I have. Um, 
So it it really, I will say, it also depends on the client. Um, mm -hmm. If I have a coaching session with a client, I will never jump into a coaching session. Uh, there I will say, okay, we need to reschedule because I want to be fully present, present in the moment. I want to give them the time they are allocated to them. Uh, if it's a quick coffee chat or check in, then if I feel like it, I can say, okay, let's do it now. So it's also a little bit of saying, knowing yourself and knowing what it requires for you to be present in this conversation, depending on what it is, saying what does work the best for you. And for example, if you, uh, okay, so if it's one client, it's a little bit easier to say like, it's them, not me. But what if like it's two, three clients in a row, like, I definitely, I think that freelancers will definitely have this feeling that, oh my God, it's something with me. Like I have a bad proposal or I have bad communication skills. Like maybe it is the case. So what do you think about that? Yeah, uh, I will. And that now comes a really uh, a coaching question. Is that <laughs> truth? Does people always cancel on you? So it's easy if you get free cancellation in a row to think, hey, everybody cancel on me. And that's rarely the truth. So see it in the bigger perspective. Um, instead of starting blaming yourself right away, just say, okay, I hit a bad, a bad strike, so to speak. Um, and yeah, you can play around with your communication, of course. Uh, say, perhaps I play a little bit how I reach out afterwards when people didn't show up and see what works the best to get a reply. Um, so that is also finding your sty style, but I will also say if, if in the long run, this should be comfortable for you, then you need to find your way and what works for you. Because there's a lot of, what you say, tips on, on how to communicate on how to ensure that people do respond to your communication. But if you're communicating in a style that is, is not you. It feels like a, a hurdle you have to pass every time. And you shouldn't have that feeling as a freelancer. We, we, we are freelancer because we love what we are doing. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I totally hear what you're talking about. And I sometimes I, I recall when I was trying to be someone else and like do this professional kind of communication. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, no, it's not me. Like, I'm, I'm not talking this way, I'm not acting this way, and I'm not feeling court comfortable. And I feel like exactly this moment when you understand that, yes, it's not me, I want to be my true self, that's what something happens. That's when, you, you know, they have the switch. I feel like that's exactly the moment when you become being happy if somebody cancel you instead of thinking like, oh my God, it's all my fault. Mm. Uh, but also, how do you think to communicate in a way that prevents this cancellation and ghosting, how to build this connection with clients up front in a way that they are, they want to meet you. They are like waiting for you two minutes before your call. Yes. Uh, I, I will say again, find, find your personal style, but there is also some tip, uh, tips and tricks. Um, for example, and that's a thing, a lot of people have a booking system. So it's very easy to book with you and people will get the uh, email invite and things like that. I do always, when I get a booking in my system, I do always send them a personal email after afterward and say, hey, I can see you booked with me. I'm looking forward to our conversation. Is there anything you would like me to prepare for? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So a little bit of that one of getting the personal touch uh, in, into also. Also because um, for me, I work mostly online. So I'm rarely meeting people in person. So I don't build that personal connection by sitting and having a meeting, a lunch together. So I need to build it online. So just this one of a small following up email as soon as you see a booking to also let them know that you have seen your booking. A, a booking uh, system, it's, it is easy and it does wonders and I wouldn't live without it. My, <laughs> my life would be a mess. But it is also very genetic uh, and very unpersonal. Yeah. So 
make a combination of making your life easier with the tools that are there, but also add what makes it personal for you. Are you also connecting with people on LinkedIn? I don't uh, connect with pretend. Uh, it depends on in what, uh, what you say, how people reach out from me. If they reach out to me uh, as an individual coach, so as a personal coach, I don't connect with them on LinkedIn mm -hmm. because it's their choice. If they want to have a coach, a coaching space is also confidential. Um, so perhaps they don't want to have that connection in their professional space and that I do respect. I do say they, are, they can connect with me if they want to, but I mm -hmm. leave it up to uh to the client to make the choice if they want to have this connection in their professional space if it's a company i'm working with then i am connecting with them on linkedin got it got it and how do you use in general linkedin as a um, maybe building for 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 building your professional brand yes uh i'm using it in, in in the way of uh what do you say one of the questions I get sometimes is uh, how many do you accept everybody who asks to connect with you? And I do. Mm -hmm. But I also remove people again if I don't feel the connection is valuable. Uh, so I'm very open to connect with everybody. But, and I think you also know this, as, as a freelancer, you will also get people who connect with you and five minutes after they're trying to sell you something. Those goes out very quickly. <laughs> Um, but in the, uh, on the other hand, uh, I never know what I need in my network. So that's why I'm very open to who, who I do accept. Um, and then I, I use LinkedIn in two ways. I use it to gather knowledge. So mm -hmm. I connect with people I can learn from. Um, so quite often, if I, for example, find a post where I, I think, hey, this is interesting, uh, what they are talking about, I will send a request just to see what else they, um, uh, they talk about. I'm not that strategic as other people are, um, but it's also, it's not my personality to be that. Uh, and I think that is again, when we talk about marketing, find out what works for you. Uh, mm -hmm. and what feels good for you. Um, so for example, I don't follow certain companies just because of the brand name. How do you feel about having coffee chats with people you don't know? I do coffee chats. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit, it goes up and down in periods how often I do them. I am an introvert. Uh, so sometimes it requires too much energy to do it. Uh, so then I take a break and otherwise everyone who connects with me, I ask if they want to have a, co a coffee chat. So it, it goes up and down, I will say. I do like them when I have the energy to have them. Got it. Got it. Okay. You know, there's the, I wish to have the sky is the limit, but time is a limit to our conversation. So <laughs> the final question, what is your favorite food? Oh, but I'm I'm a foodie. You can't and you can't ask me to uh, to say a favorite thing that is just unfair. Um, yeah, what comes to mind? Uh, and I that is pancakes, but it's also connection uh, to an emotion feeling because my dad used to make pancakes. So for me, this is just a feeling of being a child, having something lovely to yeah. eat. Um, yeah. So it is an emotion connection to pancakes more than it is the taste of the pancakes. Got it. Got it. You know, thank you so much for sharing your experience and this small, fun moments. Yeah, I, I really felt it with you when you were talking about uh, pancakes. And yeah, Daisy, it's been such a pleasure to hear and learn from you. Thank you. And thank you so much for listening. If you like the show, hit the like button on five stars and share it with your friend. That's it. We're done. See you in the next episode.